This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community that provides the most convenient and organized way to learn the skills you need to further your business or hobby. Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my best bang for the buck video editing PC 2018 edition. If you guys like those shots, make sure you guys give this video a like. And if you guys want to see the full step-by-step -step build guide, how you can go from parts and boxes to a fully built PC, just like that ready to edit video, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications because that video is coming out shortly. Along with that, I have all the parts that I used in the video description below, along with some suggestions and alternatives uh, that I would suggest instead of a few of these parts, you guys can go and check that out as well. Now, for those of you guys who've been following the channel, you guys remember eight months ago, I put out a very similar video, but in there we had AMD's brand new Ryzen CPU, which was kind of the main brain or the main part of the build that pushed that forward. AMD was kind of stagnant for years and years and years, and then they came out full force and put out a $400 CPU with eight cores that literally had twice the power than what Intel was offering and even beat out their thousand dollar CPUs. So that was an awesome video. It's still a great computer, but Intel surprised us once again and everybody really thought Intel was just not gonna be able to catch up for a while, at least for bang for the buck. And now eight months later, we have this guy right here, Intel, really pushed out a new CPU fast and they're very competitive. And now I think they dethroned AMD for this particular spot of best bang for the buck. This is Intel's 8700K, their first CPU out of the consumer line. That is a six core design. Now you might be thinking, well, how does a six core design dethrone AMD's eight core processor for a similar amount of money? Well, when you overclock this processor, which you should, it performs about the same as the 1700X or the 1800X overclocked when you're maxing out the CPU. But with that said, when you're doing video editing, a lot of times you're not maxing out the CPU. You're not using all the cores or you're not using them at full blast. And especially if you're doing tasks or using effects that can't use all the cores, so if they can only use one core or two cores or four cores, this thing is clocking higher, which it means it's gonna perform better. So if you're doing stabilization, you're doing photo editing, you're just going through the web browser, opening other applications and in general use, this thing performs better. Or if you're maxing out both systems, they're about on par. Now, along with that, the reason why I'm recommending this system over the AMDs for that mid range, best bang for the buck build is you can also use Thunderbolt 3 with Intel processors, which you cannot do with AMD processors. So you can hook up accessories, hook up a RAID array, all that type of stuff and Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C is just really growing and booming right now. So that's another big benefit of this processor. Now this thing comes clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, but you should not keep it there just like with any processor. And I overclocked this to five gigahertz. It was shocking. But what was more shocking is how easy it was. So the motherboard that I chose for this build has a overclocking automatic system that you can use. And usually these things don't work well, but going through this process, it took me like 30 seconds. I selected my water cooling, selected the type of work I'm doing, and it's sad that I can get up to 39% more CPU performance and 28% more RAM performance with a click of a button. And shockingly, it worked exactly like that. So I'm running at five gigahertz, fully stable. And even though my water cooling solution isn't very powerful and the fans that I chose for uh, the water cooling are quiet edition fans, the system does not throttle. It does get fairly warm, but it does not throttle at all like an iMac would. Now, before we take a look at my standard suite of benchmarks uh, for video editing, along with timeline smoothness and even some red raw editing up to 8K, Yes, I did some 8K Red Raw editing on this system. I have to give a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 17,000 classes in videography, productivity, photography, and more. It's available on Android and iPhone with the ability to download any course for offline viewing. So stop wasting time playing Candy Crush and expand your skills with Skillshare. I'm personally watching Simon Sinek's presentation Essentials, How to Share Ideas that Inspire Action, which I highly recommend, and next in line is the one and only Gary Vee. Premium membership begins at around $10 a month for unlimited access to learning, but the first 150 members who click the link in the description will get two months for free. 
These spots are going to go quickly, so make sure to be one of the first few. So let's take a look at some of the uh, benchmarks before we look at the video editing and see how this did. Taking a look at Cinebench R15, we had a stock score of 1,261. Now when we overclocked it, we got 1,707, which is a massive score, especially for an Intel processor at this price range. And that basically matches the best score that I got with my AMD 8-core processor running at 4 gigahertz, which some people don't get up there. Some people get up to 3.8 or 3.9. Mine did get up to 4. Now comparing it to like a 12-core Mac Pro, which was a $10,000 or plus, Plus powerhouse just three to four years ago that got a thousand five hundred and thirty three so you guys can see how much the efficiency and the clock speeds have improved on these newer processors allowing us to get really great performance for such a low amount now let's take a look at single core performance with Geekbench 4 and we're looking at 4159 on the Ryzen CPU that's overclocked to 4 gigahertz in a massive 6453 score which blew my mind uh, uh, with the Intel processor. So that's how efficient and fast these cores are. And then when you clock them to five gigahertz, it just screams. And that's when you get those improvements with the tasks that are single and dual core uh, only. Looking at Geekbench 4 multi-core without even overclocking, the Intel system beats out AMD's eight core clocked at four gigahertz. And once you overclock it to five gigahertz, now we're getting 28,903 those of you that have been watching my channel for a while know that I don't just go out and buy a random assortment of components, maybe whatever is the most expensive or whatever is the newest, put it together and make a video editing PC video. I really like to do my research. I like to test and compare different parts with different CPUs and graphics cards and RAM and see if it actually is worth spending more money. Sometimes you can spend less money and get faster performance. And I also like to challenge um, some common uh, thinking, like for example, NVIDIA graphics cards are better for video editing or 64 gigabytes of RAM is going to give you faster performance or uh, you should split up your scratch, your project and your media uh, folders into different hard drives. Those kind of things because a lot of times people just repeat that for 5-10 years when in fact you're wasting money, you're wasting time. So for this build I actually compared two different graphics cards just like with the previous Best Bang for the Buck, the GTX 1070 and the RX 580. Now what was interesting is with that PC build, the RX RX 580 is less expensive and faster for both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, just a pairing with that processor. Now for this system, the GTX 1070 is actually faster for both of those video editing uh, programs. So it's very interesting. It's not a huge difference, but it is enough of a difference that it does make sense to spend a little bit more money on this GTX 1070. Now, just to contrast that with the last two videos I did, the low-end video editing PC, the one that was around $700, and the editing PC that was like three to four thousand dollars at 16 core Threadripper PC. Both of those like the AMD graphics cards for DaVinci Resolve and the Nvidia graphics cards for Premiere Pro. So if you're building this system, the best bang for the buck build 2018 edition, go for the GTX 1070 and all of these scores that you guys are going to be seeing are with a GTX 1070. Now I'm going to show you results for four different builds. The 1600X, which is the entry-level 4K editing, the previous Best Bang for the Buck, which used the 1700X, the 8700K, which is the current Best Bang for the Buck build, and that 16-core Threadripper 8K video editing build, the Overkill super powerful PC. So that way you guys can compare and contrast the differences in performance. And I'm gonna be quoting some numbers between the previous Best Bang for the Buck and this one right here. Now along with that, you guys are gonna see both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. So you can compare the two different programs with four different systems. So it's gonna be a lot of information, but I'll try to guide you guys along. So we're gonna start out with stabilization. It's roughly 50% faster in Premiere Pro and 90% faster in DaVinci Resolve. Now this is really because of that higher clock speed. Because it's only using 15 to 25% of that CPU, that extra clock speed really gives it a boost and makes it do the stabilization much faster. Now taking a look at 1080p, a five minute project with two LUTs and film grain applied, um, the new build is 75% faster in Premiere Pro and roughly 15% faster in DaVinci Resolve. Looking at that same test, but in 4K, we're getting 40% faster in Premiere Pro and 16% faster in DaVinci Resolve. Now what's interesting is when you look at the numbers, this new build is actually closer to that very expensive Threadripper build than it is to the previous Best Bang for the Buck build, so that's very impressive. Now we're going to look at the most difficult test. This is four 4K clips 
that are scaled into a 4K project, both with two LUTs and film grain applied and two of those clips being reversed. And this is just super difficult for the CPU and the graphics card. And this is actually the first test where in Premiere Pro, the old version, the, the AMD 1700X Ryzen build is slightly faster, 13% faster than this new build. Uh, this is a test where all the CPU cores are being maxed out and the graphics is, is being maxed out. And we see slightly slower performance, but not by much, but that is not the case with DaVinci Resolve where we see a 45% speed improvement with the new build. Now you guys probably know that rendering isn't everything and even if you have fast rendering, if you're in the timeline and you're getting choppiness, it's really going to slow you down and it's going to be really frustrating. Now this is another area where this new build really excels at. Looking at Premiere Pro with A7S II footage, that's 4K with two LUTs and film grain applied. The timeline performance was buttery smooth at full resolution. There was no hiccups at all and just a few years ago this would be an issue. You'd have to scale it down to a quarter resolution. Uh, now I really had to push the system hard, I had to do four LUTs and I had to to crank the Lumetri uh, color corrections to the extreme in order for it to drop frames with full resolution 4K. Uh, but if you drop that down to half, that is buttery smooth. Now, there's really no reason to run it at full resolution anyways, because that area of the screen is only about a 1080p portion. So you should run at probably a quarter for that, unless you have a dedicated screen. Uh, but like you guys can see, even at half resolution, we're doing four LUTs and we're pushing the color correction to the max and it's running really smoothly. Uh, now on DaVinci Resolve, it's even better. I stacked 16 LUTs and I did some curve adjustments and with film grain, and even then it was buttery smooth and it would not drop frames. And the graphics usage was only at about 75% uh, and the CPU was only at about 35%. So DaVinci Resolve, the latest version is just so efficient and uh, this system is just handling everything so well when you're gonna be editing. Now let's take this another step further. Obviously 4K is nothing for the system. The graphics in the CPU is just killing it. Let's look at some red raw footage and this is where I was really impressed. Now let's take this a step further and look at some red Raven 4.5K files and we're getting buttery smooth performance at full resolution. And we can even go in and modify the settings since it is red footage, bump up the ISO, do some adjustments and still no issues. And this is 48 frames per second footage. Now we can go in and let's enable some Lumetri effects, really push this to where it looks really ugly and taxes the system. And you guys could still see we're not dropping any frames. It's handling that red footage perfectly. Now let's take this a step further, skip the 6K and go straight to 8K. Now we're playing back 8K at full resolution. It, it isn't perfectly smooth, but it is close. Now this is 24 frames per second. The 60 frames per second is a little bit more difficult. And let's go ahead and throw some Lumetri on there. This isn't the proper way to do it. This is more taxing on the system, but you guys can see now, obviously we're gonna be dropping frames. This is 8K footage that we're talking about. And keep in mind, 8K is like 33, 34 megapixels. So let's drop this down from uh, full resolution to about a quarter. And you guys can see now we're getting some pretty smooth playback. Uh, so I would not really recommend this system if you're seriously working with a lot of 8K files. This is just one clip. If you do want to do some 8K editing, definitely go out and check out my 8K video editing PC build. It is going to be quite a bit more expensive, but that system is going to do a better job if you're seriously editing 8K. So let me know what you guys think in that comment section below. I was expecting good performance, but I wasn't expecting performance at this level. And that's all thanks to that five gigahertz overclock that is really pushing this processor to that next level. And of course the new efficiencies um, of the Coffee Lake CPU architecture. Now there are a few things that I don't like about this build specifically, and I'm talking about my build that I did. Um, and I mentioned that in the beginning that I'm gonna give you guys some alternative suggestions. So to start off, the case isn't great. Great. Now I chose this case primarily because I didn't want to keep reusing the same cases that I love. So, and I didn't want to spend a ton of money. So I picked up this case and it does look quite nice, uh, but it's a little bit on the noisier side. There's no dampening or anything like that. Um, and there's not enough ports and different uh, covers and stuff like that. So it doesn't look as clean. It's a little bit more difficult to work with. So I definitely recommend the NZXTs that I've worked with in the past. And there's going to be a link to that in the video description. Now, along with that, I would recommend um, a water cooling solution that's a little bit more 
beefier than what I'm using in this system if you're going to be overclocking to 5 gigahertz. Now I did mention that this system is not throttling, which is great, but it is on the warmer side and the fans do have to kick in at full blast uh, when you're really pushing the system to keep it cool. So if you do something that's like a 240 millimeter radiator, which I'll have a link to, um, then it's going to be cooler and it's going to be quieter at the same time. Now the last thing is the motherboard, and that's because I chose a small one that would fit in this new case, uh, but there are a few limitations. For example, there's not enough fan headers, so I had to get a couple of Molex to three pin fan adapters, which keeps the fans running at full speed. You can't uh, adjust them with software in Windows. Uh, and along with that, there's no Thunderbolt 3 output, which is one of the big benefits of using an Intel CPU. So I will link a larger size motherboard that does have those features in the video description as well. So to wrap up this video, video. Overall, I'm very happy with this build. And like I said, uh, this is the new best bang for the buck video editing PC. And what that means is you can spend less money and get something that you'll be able to edit 4K with. And you can also spend more money and get something that's a little bit more overkill. But this is the sweet spot. This is where your money gets you the most value. You might spend a little bit more, but you're going to get a lot better performance uh, like you guys saw with the numbers uh, for the video benchmarks that it ran. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Definitely go and check them out. And instead of spending time while you're just hanging out, playing some games, or you're on the bus, or you're watching YouTube videos, unless they're mine, of course, uh, go and get some new skills. Seriously, there's so much great classes. You can expand your knowledge in business and filmmaking and photography. And once again, they support the channel. They support videos like these. And these videos are not cheap to make, believe me. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and you guys have those notifications enabled so you guys don't miss out on the step-by-step -step build guide that is coming out very soon. All the links are in the video description. Those links help support these videos as well. So I definitely appreciate it, guys. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.